Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and wanted to give you an actual gameplay and beta for Diablo 4 review video as opposed to the previous one. A little bit of a meme, but that said, basically the first half of the day was just spent like sitting in queues and stuff, and uh, it was a bit of a shit show. We did get plenty of gameplay in on that day, but um, yeah, just wanted to talk over a bunch of gameplay about my experiences with the Diablo 4 beta, which lasts three days. You can play three classes. Uh, the next two classes, Necromancer and Droid, will come in the open beta that everyone can play and try in a few more days' time. And um, I encourage everyone to basically try this for themselves if they're interested and make up your own mind. I don't think you should strictly listen to whatever some random internet cunt has said. Uh, because I just play games and, uh, you know, I've got my own experience and my own wants and needs and so does everyone else out there. And I think you should definitely um, tailor to your own needs. And uh, that's going to be largely because quick TLDR about um, D4 is that it's overall a pretty good game. It's like well polished, it looks nice, it's rather beautiful, but it is basically just an, an amalgamation of Diablo 3, Lost Ark, and some Diablo 2. So if like that type of a game from those things kind of excites you, then it might be the game for you. If you're looking for a POE style competitor, it's not really going to fulfill that uh, niche, that role at all, I don't think. It'll absolutely take some players away from PoE because plenty of people that play PoE are going to like try out um, D4 and then find that maybe that's what they're more into or just maybe that's what they want to spend more time in while playing both, etc. But it's by no means at all in the same sort of category as A Path of Exile because there just isn't that same level of complication, that depth, that um, sort of end game um, replayability, I feel. That's my impression off of the first 25 levels and Act 1, that it's going to be just largely a D3 style system where you have uh, pretty basic uh, mechanics, skills, items, all of that, uh, with a bit of a Lost Ark world feel, so it kind of feels a bit MMO-ish in its um, sort of overall world, overall view, and sort of I don't really know how to describe it. I didn't play a lot of Lost Ark, but I did play it a little bit, and uh, it feels a bit MMO-ish in that regard. Uh, but then I think ultimately it's going to have a D2 grinding system. So I think that's where its D2 influence is going to come from. I've yet to get to endgame at all since this only goes up to level 25 and I haven't played a closed beta. But I do think that um, from what I can tell, from what I can see, the main thing that they've going to try and borrow from D2 is sort of the gameplay loop where you're going to hit like kind of max level and then you're going to kind of farm whatever you want and it's going to be pretty repetitive farming but you're going to be chasing certain items that have a drop chance that you're not likely to see but a big sort of dopamine hit when you find that item and character slowly gets more powerful just to farm that same shit over and over again and it should just hopefully, ideally in the end, feel good to farm and feel good to find some items, but um, it's not going to be super deep. The other thing it's borrowing from D2 is, of course, the gritty, darker feel. It's um, come a long way since the D3 world, I'd say, in that it's definitely less bright, less sparkly, and there's lots of blood, guts, gore, much more gruesome uh, than the D3 counterpart. Uh, and it seems to be trying to borrow more from a D1, D2 world feel for that, where you just um, have a lot of blood everywhere, you feel like you're in a bit of a dark, demonic, ritualistic world where um, people are a bit messed up and they've gone through a lot. So with that, it's definitely gone a long way in that regard. So let's just call that a summary of the sort of feel, my opinions. I think it's a pretty good game. Um, it's not necessarily going to be what a lot of us are looking for, um, especially if um, you're looking for something to kind of replace PoE or something really big in the next Diablo franchise installment uh, because it's... Um, 
I'll elaborate on that a little bit more. But I want to go over plenty of the um, things in game and talking points about the systems. So I'll start with the story, which we can see a bit of here. Uh, I think the story is pretty good. Like I'm a big Diablo fan of story, like the demons, angels, Diablo, all of that shit. And I'm looking forward to more. And this one has been pretty good so far. D3 was f fairly lackluster, as we could all like, you know, attest to. Uh, this one should be um, something like much more engaging and more to look forward to for most of us uh, because it's looking quite a bit um, grittier, quite a bit more fleshed out, so far better written and all that. Uh, so I personally probably, I'd say, the thing I'm most looking forward to for the actual launch is just doing the campaign, going through the story, seeing more about this Lilith business, seeing if Diablo fits in somehow, and um, all the angels and demons crap that goes with it. It's um, fairly gory, there's uh, some good cinematics, and uh, it's, it's leaving you kind of wanting more thus far. We've only seen Act 1. Um, the sort of negatives, I'd say, uh, it still is maybe too much dialogue at times. It might be a bit slow. Some of the characters are like pausing too much in between their dialogue, so it feels a bit stiff and, you know, people are going to be laughing at voice acting or some shit, but uh, it might just be a direction sort of difference. Um, so it does feel a bit drawn out at times and like you're kind of going on too many um, back and forth FedExes, like you got to go to one place to the next place and then they just do a bit of dialogue. So the campaign can feel a bit slow compared to the main game where you're just hoping to blast stuff but you're like going from character to character listening to monologues and shit. Uh, and then on top of that there's also um, still kind of the big mistake of lots of holograms and memories and stuff of people that you're listening to talk so you can kind of understand more about what's happened in their backstories or some shit whereas you could leave that more of a mystery or just have a quick cutscene showing what happened in that past instead we're kind of like privy to a hologram memory and uh, that feels a bit off as well. Other than that, uh, the story has been pretty good to follow and it uh, is engaging enough and certainly so far much better than D3 and I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about um, that whole storyline when D4 actually comes out. So yeah, the atmosphere that they have built is far more um, sort of bloody compared to previous things and they've tried to take that from D1, D2 and it is noticeable um, at times uh, I mean it's still in the act one we haven't seen that much but there's plenty of zones where there's uh, huge amounts of blood and guts and you could feel uh, sort of the um, sort of demonic nature of plenty of these things and a few quest lines where you're just like wow that's a bit dark but um, to each their own as to whether or not that's gonna do much still in the act one though so plenty of things to come um, so I think that takes care of the story and sort of the world they've built. It definitely feels a bit more Diablo. Um, as far as other things, the combat itself. The combat does feel pretty good. It's one of the things that's always been praised about D3 uh, compared to other ARPGs. It's that the combat feels good. And the combat here is really no less the same. It's good. It's clean. It's... Um, fairly satisfying it's got good explosions and satisfying hits uh, i've tried out the barb as well as the rogue and uh, the rogue is a bit zappy at times it's got you know some good movement here or there some clean skills that uh, help you feel a bit more roguelike and then the barb just has chunkier sort of hits and feels pretty good to hit with the bigger hits uh, there's some screen shake involved that helps you feel those um, big punches and hits uh, and I haven't touched the sorceress, but from all accounts, it's pretty overpowered. And if you want a proper, easy go through the beta, you try out the sorceress. But from what I've seen, it has some nice gameplay and uh, goes pretty well. Um, some of the things are a bit fast, like you really can't avoid much damage during the main game. You're just going to be taking damage unless you kill stuff immediately because everything's hitting pretty quick and the projectiles are quick and there's lots of mobs overwhelming you. It's more against boss fights, the mini boss fights and stuff where there's more telegraphed mechanics and stuff you can actually dodge and that 
is fine it is fairly dodgeable and telegraphed and all that but during the actual game it really feels tough to not take a lot of damage but things don't hit super hard so you can take like a hundred hits and then eventually you might die so you'll be using your potion fairly frequently which is just a basic potion gives you a bit of a life boost and then a bit of life over time afterwards you got five potion uses and you can replenish them using those globes that um, you see on the ground quite frequently so that's your main form of recovery but the combat itself is pretty good for what it is uh, there aren't many skills involved is the problem uh, so you really only have a few things to choose from I don't know what the end game paragon system is going to look like where once you hit a certain level you start upgrading paragon points or something that's supposed to be more customizable supposedly but your basic skill tree is pretty fucking basic uh, it's good I like the tree aspect of it, the layout, more than I did the D3 system, but if you actually really look at it, strike the parallels to D3, it is very much the D3 skill system. You have a choice of a basic attack, this time five choices instead of four. Uh, you then have a choice of basically a main skill spender, five choices instead of four, but it's in a tree format. Uh, you then have a, a skill that lets you sort of mobility or... Um, elusiveness evasiveness that sort of thing um, you then have a skill that lets you sort of do some utility action and then an ultimate skill and there really is only a choice between a few things and then ultimately the actual uh, enhancement of that skill is a choice between two things and largely a lot of the time it's not even a choice between two things it's just like kind of a no-brainer so there isn't that much choice involved and it actually somehow ends up currently from what we've seen being less than d3 so we'll see um, if the end game system for paragon or whatever and leveling up higher to like a hundred uh, makes things different but from what i've seen so far it's a nice little system it's clean i like the tree more than the um, d3 skill system but um, there's less choice involved at the end of the day uh, so from what i can tell as long as there's going to be like certain legendary powers and uniques that put you towards certain builds pretty much everyone's gonna be playing like two different builds per class um, but that's what we can tell thus far anyway and then speaking of d3 which we will be doing frequently because this is literally d3.5 uh, the sort of combat and the monster affix system is very much like d3 you'll see a lot of the same um, monster affixes so there'll be like arcane where they drop some turrets on the ground that do some arcane shit there'll be plague that does some poison damage and then um kind of explodes in a poison chaos a bit there'll be the frost thing that just does a little frost circle and then explodes a bit molten which will be the same thing but like it's kind of just re-graphicked but the same shit um, so you'll know what to expect with a lot of these monster affixes. There's Waller, there's Circle, Orbiter thing. Literally a lot of the same stuff. Um, so it is built upon the same system, and I, it seems as though they went, okay, we'll take what works, we'll take what we think was good from D3 and build upon it. Uh, since that is maybe still the most sold PC game of all time. If not, it's one of the most sold PC games of all time. So it's wildly successful. So we can't say that it didn't like succeed in what it set out to do. So if they're looking to make billions and billions of dollars again, yeah, you build upon that system and you try and make it better. And that's what the game um, ends up being. The combat feels a lot like D3, but much more modernized, more um, sort of future 2023 polished with um, less cartoony elements to it uh, and then the actual game systems themselves seem very d3 so we're talking the skill system we're talking the um, talent tree the combat the mob mechanics the uh, ui the crafting system the items so the next thing to talk about is basically the crafting system and the items and they are d3.5 uh, you you have just a few slots for your gear, you'll have magics, rares, and then legendaries, but then there'll be a higher tier of item, which is uniques, which 
we can't get yet they're in the higher levels and the higher difficulty and they're supposed to be better than what we've experienced thus far a truly unique item that enhances your character in certain ways um, that the legendaries don't do because the legendaries are basically just rares at the moment plus a special affix that does something um, sort of different that the rares otherwise would not do. So they are still essentially a glorified rare item. There's nothing really legendary about it, so it's a bit of a misuse of the word because it's just taken from D3, an orange item, legendary, but it's not really legendary in this regard. It's just a rare plus an, uh, an affix. Um, and then there'll be like sacred items or some shit and ancients, something like that. So it's going to be a similar system to D3, I'm pretty sure, where there's ancient items, primal ancient items, and you just go into the bigger min-max and all of that. But the um, gear, that, gear itself has like a big special mod sometimes that will do a big multiplier. Uh, there'll be just basic stuff like some dexterity or some strength, maybe a bit of life, and then some crit or some crit damage and it really is very reminiscent of D3. Um, and then the actual crafting systems and stuff feel pretty reminiscent once again, uh, though I'm still not really sure what's happening with the blacksmith and the upgrading of your items. As far as I can tell, you just put an item in and then you can upgrade it like four times to make it slightly better each time, like everything gets a tiny bit better. If that's it, if that's the entire crafting thing, that's kind of lackluster, but I'm not too sure what's happening there yet. I haven't really explored it too much. Whereas there's the um, Occultist, I think it's called, where you can extract your legendary powers. So the big special power on your legendary, extract it, put it on another item. So you can customize your items a bit more, make better choices in um, how you're building your character. Uh, and um, that seems okay. It's, it's basically a simplified or a more flexible D3 system where um, you can have your cube that just lets you borrow a few legendary powers. In this way, you're instead like customizing your character's gear uh, how you want it to be um, across the board. And it just takes a bit of grind to be able to get the right item, get the right gear, uh, and it shouldn't be too hard to do. So we haven't actually seen the endgame system of uniques and sacreds and stuff like that. So that should hopefully um, bust open quite a bit more of the gearing system. But the basic gearing is still very basic. Um, another gripe that I've got is the items themselves don't feel very special. Like all the rares that you see me finding are basically bow like rare bow, that's it, like rare boots, that's it. So, you know, there's no like base types, there's no like real sense of higher tier gear and progression in that way. I'll find a, a rare boot at level one, and then I'll find a rare boot at level 25 that has a different graphic on it, but it's still called boot, and it's just gonna be a, a better rolled boot. And your bow is just gonna say bow, and then it's at a high level which is going to be a better bow which feels a bit weird because uh, even previous d2 and d3 systems and all that had different like tiers of item and exceptionals and all that uh, so i don't know about that but um that's just something we've picked up on um otherwise i think for crafting and gearing i mean that's so far what i've seen it's still very early to tell once again i have to mention we we're only up to level 25 and it's act one so there's probably more to see supposedly uniques are pretty powerful and very unique you won't find many of them and then the next tier of item maybe is even bigger uh so that's what i was saying more with the d2 uh system borrowed for endgame loop perhaps that ends up leading to you wanting to grind and farm and finally find that one big item and have this dopamine hit which is how it is in D2 because you just kill a hundred of the same boss and get nothing but then once you do finally get that one good item it feels really good uh, and the one thing I have to mention about all these is these games and this type of system only works if you don't think about it too much if you don't like stop pause think about why you're on the treadmill and what it's doing this little gameplay loop of you're grinding to grind harder so you can grind harder so you can find stuff so you can grind harder uh you're basically just on a treadmill and if you if you ever start thinking about that in diablo 2 in lost ark in world of warcraft in poe in any of that shit you'll be like oh god what am i doing in my life 
So don't do that. Don't think about that. Just instead take it for what it is. And if you're having fun, you're having fun and just keep trying to have fun. Um, so that's just one thing I wanted to mention there. And that is a good opportunity to talk about what the actual end game loop is gonna be like. So far what we've seen, once again, only up to act one is dungeons and then like these little quests out in the world. There's also the world boss, which I'll touch on in a second, but from what we can tell, you're gonna be farming dungeons a lot and that's what they've like touched on that dungeons are going to be sort of, sort of the end game system where you enter a zone there's a bunch of stuff to kill there's a small objective to complete whether it's just kill a boss or kill a few things or take x to y um, and the dungeons are going to get more difficult in nature they'll have different diff more difficult affixes um, and that might be it if that's it and what we're currently experiencing at this level is essentially the endgame system, people will get pretty tired of it pretty quick. Um, we'll see how it goes, because there might be much more varied dungeons in the future, there might be more um, sort of world content, but you can kind of pick up just little world quests, you can do little world encounters, you can run around and just kill stuff and stuff will drop, but for the most part, the good stuff or the better loot is in the dungeons at the moment, and you run in, you start a dungeon, Sometimes the layouts are very similar and it feels a bit repetitive. Sometimes it's got a very not enjoyable um, objective where you might have to backtrack a lot or take a box to another box or something and um, you're sort of backtracking or overlapping your content and um, it doesn't feel like what you want it to be where it's just run in and kill a lot of things and uh, that's kind of more of what the D3 Rift system was and I think what a lot of people that are into D3 um, would have still liked again. Whereas these dungeons so far have left a bit to be desired but maybe there will be a lot more variety given that there's another four acts to discover. If we're doing five acts worth of dungeons and they're all kind of different and there's different objectives and different bosses then it might be okay uh, especially if the loot is good and worth chasing but um, that seems to be the end game loop the dungeons are kind of like end game zones in D2 where you just can pick a high level zone farm it and um, hopefully some good stuff drops as long as it's fun to do and the loot is worthwhile doing then it still kind of makes sense as soon as those things aren't, you know, if the loot isn't worth it or if it's not that fun to do, then you've got yourself a problem. And that's where PoE's large, large system of endgame uh, is going to be far superior for an endgame system, but for a lot of people that's too intimidating. Um, when you know you've got a lot to do, it really feels hard to take the first step. Whereas this is a lot more of you can log in, just bash some faces in and uh, it doesn't really matter which face you're bashing in or which dungeon you're entering it's all kind of just the same and um, it's not too complicated and you still get rewarded for it and it feels kind of good to do and you might get even bigger rewards just off the random chance so that might still be something I think that can be okay uh, just depending on how it pans out because D2 is pretty shallow in its regard at this point for 2023, but I still personally can have fun logging in and doing some D2 for a couple weeks, likewise with D3, but it is very short-lived and short-term. Um, but that's the big problem with the D2 and the D3 uh, past and this current present is that it took a lot of the old games and just kind of built upon them. And I wanted to mention this earlier, but I guess I forgot. My one thing that makes me less excited about D4 than I otherwise should be is that every new Diablo game should feel like a new Diablo game. Like when Diablo 1 first came out, holy shit, basically defined the genre. This is all new and let's discover all of this. Waited a while, D2 came out, oh my god, it's a whole new game, this is amazing, let's discover everything here, new story, new systems, new everything, I love it. Played it for a long time, D3 came out, um, waited a long time for it, you know, still very excited to get into it, it was pretty good for what it was, a lot to discover, a lot of new systems to discover, got a bit tiresome at some point, but it was all new, 
and it was all different and there's stuff to discover and then as d4 is coming out we've seen a lot about it along the way step by step so if you've kept up you already know a lot about the game and then once you log in it's like okay i remember this from this game i remember this from this game these are all just like old systems being put together and to some extent brought into the present but i was more looking as a diablo fan to just have a whole new game to discover, new systems, new world to be put into. But this this can still be very fun, this can still be very um, enjoyable, it's just not quite the box that I was hoping to be ticked. Either way, that's my um, personal feeling and gripe on it. And then lastly, I guess I could touch on the world boss, since it's a bit of an MMO cross ARPG, they did include world boss, so as you're running around you'll see other people and um, occasionally you'll see people at lower level or higher level, but it's all sort of um, level balance normalized, so when you're attacking your level 7 area, a dude that comes by who's level 20 will be attacking the same mob, but for him it's level 20. Um, and you might feel more powerful than him, which can be a bit weird. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about this shit, that you scale with your um, level, so as you hit from level 14 to 15, everything around you becomes level 15, so you never truly feel more powerful, unless you are actually becoming more powerful through gear spikes. Uh, and there's some pros and cons to that. I don't really have an opinion one way or another. A lot of people feel strongly that it's wrong and that you never get more powerful. A lot of people like that you um, can do lots of things. I think it's kind of good that you can just scale with your content and you can go back and do whatever content you want or progress with whatever content you want and it's constantly um, giving you good rewards and good XP. But then at the same time, it does feel kind of bad that you're not always getting a power spike and you can't go back and overpower some level of content. I, I'm i more on the side that I like this uh, system where you get higher level and everything gets higher level with you and you can go at your own pace and progress through zones at your own pace, but it's going to be a point of divisiveness, I think. So then you got the world boss. The world boss at the moment, level 25 zone, um, spawns like a couple times a day or some shit and it's a pretty big encounter, like, it takes 15 people of a sound enough mind to be able to do it. Um, it doesn't take that many, like, probably 5 to 10 can do it if they're all decent enough and higher level enough. I have happened to do it the first time at well under the level, like level 18 or something, and then level 22, something like that. And uh, it was pretty tough both times. You do have to be on your toes. It's going to one-shot you. It's going to have mechanics that you have to dodge. And um, it's a bit unfortunate that you really need some good mobility for it. Without good mobility or just straight up knowing all of the telegraphed attacks, uh, you're going to be dying a lot. Um, but the one thing I didn't really like personally was that the maps or the camera zoomed out a lot. And your character felt super tiny and your movements felt super... Um, inadequate so it left you feeling almost slow which I guess is kind of what they're going for they want the world boss to feel really big and ultimate and whatever but um, it didn't feel good in that regard that all my actions felt kind of inconsequential uh, and just minute so when I'm moving I barely felt like I was moving when I was attacking um, you know, my projectile covered like a quarter of the screen or some shit. But it feels like a cool system to have. Extra world boss where 10-15 minutes spent with a bunch of other people. You can kill it together, get a few legendaries and um, something to test your DPS on. So yeah, with that, uh, apologies the video is so long, but I wanted to try and cover pretty much every topic possible, give all my opinions out there about D4. Uh, the basic closing statement is, I think D4 is a pretty good game, like for... Uh, new ARPG on the block. Uh, I think it's a bit of a shame that there's not a whole lot more new shit. They played it pretty safe with a lot of things, I think, uh, just because they know that they're going to make a lot of money off the Diablo uh, IP. Basically, no matter what, I would have liked to see more innovation, more um, you know risks, more new shit, as opposed to borrowing off of the old games and going, we know you like this, you know, here's more of it. And, you know, we're returning back to the roots that you wanted us to go to. But the 
real point there is you want more of the roots of what we liked but innovated you know as a new thing uh, i think it's a good game for for the testing that i've done so far with beta um, but it's by no means going to tick the same box that a poe is going to tick if that's what you're looking for if you're looking for a game that's going to like if you, you want to spend 70 bucks and you're looking for a game that's going to um, suck up the next year of your life or something non-stop, you know, sink all of your time into, this probably ain't going to be it. Maybe it is for some people, um, but it's going to run out of its um, gameplay loop at some point, unless they're constantly going to be updating stuff and, you know, hot fixing stuff and introducing new content. Um, it will, by the looks of it, have a certain level of depth that is just going to be run out of, and um, you'll play it every now and again like a D3 uh, during the seasons that are going to be popping up. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want anyone to get mad at the game or hate on the game. And there's no real reason for turf wars of which game's better, PoE or D4. They're doing different things at this point. And um, as far as I can tell, D4 is basically not even competing with PoE. They're not trying to be anything like PoE. They've borrowed very little from PoE. What they're taking and building from is a D3, is a D2, is a Lost Ark, and even some WoW influence as well. Um, PoE isn't really a thing for them to worry about because they're not trying to compete in that space. And you shouldn't be trying to compete um, in your time between these games you play this game if that's what you're feeling like and that's the kind of smash and grab you're into or you play the other game if you're looking for um something to be a bit more um thought provoking and uh, hard to figure out and uh challenging so yeah hopefully that was a good video for you guys i tried my best to explain everything possible i'm probably gonna be playing plenty of d4 when it comes out you know a few weeks at least i'm looking forward to the story uh but i don't think this is going to replace poe for me um still too early to tell we'll see maybe the full game gives us a whole bunch more that we're looking for maybe it feels really good maybe we're constantly ticking a certain dopamine box and want to keep ticking it uh, I'm open to the possibilities that I'll play more D4 than I will PoE, but it seems unlikely. So with that, um, there's still another beta weekend to try Necromancer and Droid in a few more days. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.